Good evening everybody. Nice to be with you again. I'm going to read from this book. It's Coleman Cuts Mustard. And we're on a different topic tonight. And uh, the topic is why you should stockpile food. That's if you can afford to. If you trust in God, like me, and you haven't got the money, you know you'll survive, whatever. So why you should stockpile food now? It's just an opinion. Food shortages are coming and the cost of food is going to rise even faster than it has been doing. And it isn't because of global warming or whatever other lies they tell you. It is, however, partly a side effect of the coronavirus scandal, the biggest and the most dangerous hoax in history. All around the world, food is in short supply. The price of the world's most important staple food, rice, has risen by 70%. Food prices in the USA have recently seen a historic jump and are destined to stay high and go higher. Countries which have good food production are halting their exports. Vietnam, for example, has stopped exporting because they need their food supplies at home. And you cannot blame them. The authorities condemn it as nationalism that all countries, all villages, all homes would do much the same. And it is the absurd overreaction to a bug, no more dangerous than the flu, that is causing the problem. And that will result in millions of deaths to add to the millions who are going to die as a result of the lockdowns. The total death rate from the coronavirus is, let me remind you, yet again, two thirds of the number who would have died of the flu in the same period and the coronavirus figures have been artificially inflated. But the global death rate from the side effects accidental or deliberate of what I now call the coronavirus scandal is going to be measured in millions. So how is it the coronavirus scandal responsible for the food shortages that are coming? That is easy to explain. Processing plants and distribution centres all around the world have been severely disrupted, disrupted by the massive overreaction to this fairly ordinary virus. If one worker on a farm or in a warehouse falls ill with flu-like symptoms, then the authorities are often closing down the farm or the warehouse. Is this a panic? Or is it being deliberately orchestrated for some hidden reason? Huge crops of vegetables and fruit are being ploughed into the ground. Millions of animals are being slaughtered and then buried or burnt because the supply chains have been shut down. America, almost unbelievably, is now importing beef because of the shortages there. The world lockdown and the mass house arrests that were engineered 
to keep us all subservient mean that thousands of farmers cannot get their crops picked. Fruit in particular is likely to rot in the fields and tankers full of milk are poured away. Controls on transport have meant that it has been difficult to move food from where there is a glut to where there is a dearth. It would have been easy for governments to insist that furloughed workers should help pick the crops, but they didn't do so. Or what about all those students locked out of their colleges? And the unsurprising consequence of all this is that there are going to be massive shortages of fruit and vegetables and so prices are going to rocket. Inevitably, the most toxic of the Remainers, the fascist EU loving lunatics, bigoted, soaked in their own prejudices and consumed by ignorance, will bl blame Brexit for the shortages. If they develop a bald spot or lose their keys, they blame Brexit. Sadly for them, the shortage is global, not local to the UK. All around the world, there is a shortage of almost all foods and other factors are going to ensure that the shortage just gets worse. If and when the economy is allowed to stutter into action again, the price of oil will doubtless eventually rise because the existing supplies are diminishing rapidly and most oil companies have pretty well given up exploration. The rising price of oil will mean that farming and transportation costs will rise. That will also push up the price of food. I know oil is being made all the time, but the current crop of oil in preparation won't be ready for another 50 million years at least and you will probably want to eat before then. I tell you this not to scare you but because when you know something is happening you can do something about it. You may think it is worthwhile building up your stocks of long dated food staples such as rice and pasta and bottled water because that is going to be in short supply too and maybe even an extra packet or two of loo rolls. Dried and tinned fruit with long dates are also good. Governments tell us not to store stuff but the military don't buy bullets they need the, that they, the day they need them, do they? If you have a garden and can grow your favourite vegetables or fruit, that is probably a good idea. But watch that no one climbs over your fence and steals them. I do not recommend having an allotment. The chances of you being able to harvest your own crops are too remote because they will be stolen. It might also be a good idea to stock up on vitamin and mineral supplements. I rather suspect that we are going to have more alleged virus health calamities coming up. If it is not the coronavirus in a preordained second wave, it will be something else. 
if they can make up one crisis, then they can and will make up many, many more. I have always been a bit of a contrarian, though I don't suppose anyone would notice. And I am convinced that the time to panic by is when there is no panic. There are several other explanations for what has already happened and for what is going to turn this into a perfect storm of food shortage. Some of the explanations are short term and some are long term. The next problem has not received as much publicity largely because the newspapers and TV and radio stations have been too busy bombarding us with fake news authorised by government propaganda experts to bother with real news. The problem is locusts. Plagues of them have been travelling from Arabia into Africa. Most of us tend to think of a swarm of insects as being no more than a few yards across. But locusts tend to think rather bigger. A decent sized swarm of locusts can be as large as London. And there can be lots of swarms. That is pretty scary. But even scarier is the fact that a plague of locusts can in two days eat their way through as much food as would keep the whole of the population of the UK going for a day. A swarm can lay around 1,000 eggs per square yard of land. You can imagine what that will do to the world's food supplies. Of course, we should be able to re rely on the Food and Agricultural Organization, a United Nations agency, which is supposed to control problems like this. The FAO is a bit like the World Health Organization, so that is nice. And so now, there are swarms of locusts wandering across Africa and each swarm can cover 20 square miles. All the locusts do is breed and eat. When they land on a tree, the combined weight will bring down large branches. Africans sometimes panic and fire at the swarms with rockets and anti-aircraft guns. But when the enemy is numbered in billions, just killing a few thousand doesn't make a lot of difference. The FAO is crop spraying with chemicals, but unfortunately the locusts seem to have developed immunity. In one area, locusts all fell off trees after being sprayed, but Three days later, they all got up, shook themselves, and flew away. A small swarm of locusts can strip a hundred acres in minutes. Inevitably, the fake crisis that has been gripping the world has dis disrupted slice supplies of the chemicals for spraying and the swarms of locusts are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, threatening food supplies in Africa, Arabia and Asia. The economies of these countries affected are going to be destroyed. Food will be scarce and what there is will be unaffordable. If the West had not been so busy looking at the virus hoax, they might have been able to do something to stem the tide of the locusts. But the locusts are munching away 
and the farmers are digging their crops into the ground and the food shortages which are coming will be biblical. If this is why governments everywhere are determined to kill off old people as quickly as they possibly can, is one of the many reasons for the coronavirus being exaggerated, the desire to close down farms and warehouses and distribution centres, apparently legitimately, when one worker tests positive for the coronavirus or develops a mild symptom or two? Maybe the advice here will help those who watch these videos do a little food stockpiling now so that you and your family will have a better chance to be strong and healthy. Countries look after themselves and we all need to do so. It is not selfish, it is survival. If and when your government finally warns you of this problem, it will be far too late. In my next video, Vernon Coleman says on food, I will deal with the other factors which are making this problem worse and which may explain why governments and the people behind them have deliberately exaggerated the coronavirus crisis and have with no exaggeration turned it into the biggest scandal in human history. Thank you for listening. I do hope you do your own fact checking and not just rely on me the reader or the writer, Dr. Coleman, Vernon Coleman. I do suggest you fact find and not take what I've read as gospel or what he's written as gospel. Do some research. The facts are out there. You can find them. People are keeping records all the time worldwide. You know that. You can find it. I wish you luck.